Hey everyone, it's Graphic Back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the top three builds you should definitely be running in New World when trying to get from level 1 to level 60 as fast as possible. These are builds that we've talked about in the past that have some changes to them, so if you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. Let's jump right into it. So the first thing you're going to notice is in the bottom, I'm on the PTR right now so I can show you all my builds without, you know, using my Azoth, my gold, and everything to respec and all that, but incoming downtime for a planned patch the server goes down at 10 27 2022 at 3 p.m so i have about 15 minutes to make this video let's make it happen all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our weapon mastery there's going to be a couple different weapons that i really want to jump into because these are going to be very very strong when it comes down to movement speed and it comes down to solo killing things very very quickly the most obvious build we're going to start with because a lot of you guys may have already heard the suggestion it's going to be the hatchet of course, and Hatchet is so good when it's paired with a couple different things. You can actually go Hatchet Great Axe, you can actually go Hatchet Life Staff, you can even go Hatchet Bow, and that's why it's so, so good. So the Hatchet, the first thing you're going to want is Berserk, because that's going to give you that movement speed and increased damage. Of course, when you take the On the Hunt, while Berserk is active, your movement speed is increased by 20%. So you're going to want to take all of the different Berserk perks, and then, of course, the Feral Rush, if you want to get in a nice little leap with some damage. And then the biggest PvE damage of all time is going to be the Raging Torrent. Four fast attacks. It's going to be very, very quickly. I'll take these just to show you guys what these look like real quick. And the notice, you know, if we actually go back to the Weapon Mastery, because a lot of you guys have seen these abilities before, uh, I want to go back to the Weapon Mastery because there's one thing I want you guys to know what's so good about the Hatchet as well is the Defy Death. If you guys don't know much about this game, you may not know that the Hatchet has basically, or I guess, what is this called? A passive is what I'm looking for here. When you receive that lethal damage, you avoid death, and you're reduced to 50% health, or not 50%, but 50 health, I should say, and gain, gain that immortality for three seconds. So for three seconds after you take that, you know, damage that would typically kill you, you are invulnerable, basically which is insanely strong for not just PvP, but also PvE. And that's why this is going to be the number one weapon when it comes to the best weapons to start to get from 1 to 60 in New World. So what do you want to pair it with? Typically, I would say the Great Axe is a great one because you're going to be able to take a couple different things that are going to help you out. You have Reap. If you really, really want Reap, you can actually pull enemies closer to you, which is going to allow you to group up enemies much easier. You can also take Charge. Charge is going to be the mobility factor when it comes to the Great Axe. It's going to charge 10 meters and deal 120% weapon damage when you reach that target. So mobility is key here. So the Charge and the hatchet together is going to be huge, huge, huge speed with the berserk and, like I said, the charge. We can also take a look here if I select some more passives real quick. Let's take a look. What is this called? It's called Bloodlust. You move 20% faster and deal 15% more damage when looking at a foe within 14 meters. So, again, mo mobility is just king with the great axe hatchet. Nobody can catch you if you're PvP flagged and you don't want to fight them because they're in a group of five or something. And then they also can't really do anything to you if you are on top of them. They can't get away because this is a in, really the best probably catch build in the game if you take something like maybe Maelstrom or Gravity Well, which we'll talk about as well. Because Maelstrom is going to pull targets within a 2.5 meter radius closer to you. It's great for PvE for sure and also PvP. Same with Gravity Well. An upward swing dealing 99 weapon percent damage, or sorry, 99% weapon damage, and projecting a powerful tear in reality that creates a vortex up to 10 meters away. The vortex pulls foes within 4 meters to its center and roots them for one second. So, Gravity Well, an obvious choice if you are looking to group enemies very, very closely. Same with Maelstrom. So, in reality, if I'm going PvE, I would go Maelstrom, I would go Gravity Well, and I'd go Charge to really get around the map fast as I could, but also take the ability to just group all the mobs up in one little clump. So, Great Axe Hatchet, obviously a great build to run. If you're also looking to run maybe something like a bow, let's go into a build for that. So, Hatchet, again, is just going to come up as the majority number one pick. So I'm going to try to skip past that. We're going to go to another melee weapon to go with or pair with the bow. If you guys want the bow hatchet, it definitely works because hatchet does scale as a secondary with dexterity. If you go to your attributes, you can see that, by the way, if you're new, you can see under strength, which ones actually scale with strength and which ones scale with strength and dex or strength and intelligence or dexterity and strength. So you can kind of find out which ones are going to fully scale in which ones have a slight scale with uh, certain perks, or sorry, certain attributes. 
Now let's talk about what would be a great pairing with the bow when it comes to speed. Obviously, like I said, the hatchet, but if you're looking to do the bow, the cool thing now is that the bow doesn't actually cost your arrows anymore. If you don't have any arrows in the slot, it won't use any arrows. You have automatically, you kind of start with arrows in a way. So let's take a look at, let's see if we have a bow real quick on us. It looks like we do, which is nice. So let's put that bow on. So right now I have zero arrows on me. If you guys look, okay, now I have zero arrows on me nothing in the arrow slot, I'm still able to shoot. So it's not going to cost you a ton of money like it used to to craft arrows all the time or buy arrows on the market when you're starting out. You can just use no arrows and there you're good to go. So the bow is very, very good because you're going to be able to tag enemies. Same with the musket, the same kind of concept here. You're going to be able to tag enemies from very, very far away to pull closer to you. And then you can kind of meet them in the middle with something like a spear, great axe, uh, you know, great sword, warhammer, any of these would work, but the best to pair with a bow and a musket because they mostly scale with dexterity would be something like a spear or rapier because those are going to be dex focused uh, attribute scalers. So rapier, spear are great with the bow or musket. Any of those four together will work great. I would definitely go with a melee and a range as one ability or sorry, one build instead of a double melee or a double uh, range. Just because tagging, like I said, from far away, when there's a lot of people doing these quests, is going to be very, very important. If there are mobs very, very far away and you need to tag them before they go down, musket and bow are going to be great for that. That's why those are going to have a spot in this top three. So now we've kind of gone over, in a reality, much more than three builds, but we've kind of gone over two different style of builds. So now I want to do kind of a big boy build. And before we jump into the big boy build, I do want to say Hatchet does have a throwing side. So if you wanted to go away from Feral Rush or Raging Torrent for something like Rending Throw, Social Distancing, or Infected Throw, you are going to be able to still tag enemies from far away. So that's why, again, it is king. But it does miss that constant, you know, bow shots where you can hit, you know, three or four enemies in a row, drag them all to you. But yes, you can throw the Hatchet, and it's very, very useful in PvE to kind of, like I said, drag some of those opponents or at least tag them before these mobs of people in the fresh start servers take them out and also same thing with spear you can also go the javelin which is going to be a nice way to throw your spear make sure you're tagging enemies but again you're going to be able to use that ability once every couple seconds or so and it's going to be much better to just have a bow or musket to tag those from far away if we go to the next one though that i said was going to be a big boy build it's going to be something like a warhammer great sword blunderbuss because again i like the idea of having something that you can tag with i think it's going to be very very important with all of these clumps of people playing in the fresh starts leveling at the very very you know second that it releases it's going to be hard to get some of these quest mobs as soon as they spawn definitely if they didn't buff up the respawn rates insanely high so blunderbuss going to be a great one to have this is just a random build i was testing out i would suggest something different but really you can play around with these blunderbuss isn't going to be a huge deal when it comes to pve so you can actually you know play around with some of these net shot will help you kite a little bit you could also go with for anything else i think net shot's probably one of the strongest abilities when it comes to pvp as well but if you're looking for more damage side of things you can go to the chaos side see what those all do and play around with those. But I do want to jump into what you'd pair that with because a lot of people have started playing the Greatsword and there's reasons as to why. It's the highest DPS in the game. I'm talking the highest. It's the newest weapon as well. So there's a lot of hype over it, but the crosscut does insane damage. In PvE, you're going to be able to hit all of your crosscuts uh, abilities because it's, you know, they're, they're PvE mobs. You're, you should be able to hit them at least, right? So then you have a relentless rush for a little bit of a, you know, get out of here situation where you need to get the heck out. You can use your relentless rush. It's going to be nice for that specifically. You have calamity counter. If you get in over your head, you can just use calamity counter and you can just sit there with your stamina bar and then do a lot of extra damage, but without taking any damage. So this is kind of where I'm going to be kind of with the top three best PVE builds in fresh starts. So this is my overall thinking here. Uh, let me know what you guys think, by the way, in the comments of the video. I know I've kind of rambled through this, but I wanted you guys to get as much information as possible within, you know, a short amount of time. I could make an hour, two hour video probably discussing every single build for fresh starts. And maybe some of you guys would like that, but I want a majority of people to understand this video in a quick time. So here's what we got. We have Hatchet Great X is a very, very strong build, probably the best for fresh starts, right? For PVE at the very least. It's going to give you the most mobility, give you a ton of damage. Rahatchet Great Axe is going to be huge, 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 but you can also go Hatchet Lifestaff to make sure you're never dying and you can basically solo anything. 
You can also go the hatchet with pretty much anything that scales with dexterity or strength. You can always go to the attributes page to make sure it scales with something that you are looking to play. And then let's talk a little bit about the next build in line. That's going to be the bow and the musket with either the spear and the rapier. These are both very, very fun builds, probably not the best of the best when it comes to speed, but the bow does have a few different ways to kind of benefit from using it. So if you're surrounded by three or more foes, you do gain 20% haste. There's also a couple others as well. So dodge and weave after you dodge, you gain 10% haste for two seconds. And there's a few more movement speed ones that you can look into. So archer speed gain 10% haste for five seconds when you swapped your bow. These are all movement speed abilities that work really, really well with the bow. I would say musket does take a little bit of a backseat. However, musket does shoot farther, so if you're tagging from even farther away or you like the way the musket shoots because the bow's a little bit too hard or anything like that, you can definitely go there for the musket. So the bow, spear, bow, rapier, musket, spear, musket, rapier, those are the next two builds to look at, or really those are, I guess, four interchangeable builds there. Next, though, is going to be that big boy build that we talked about. That's going to be the blunderbuss and the greatsword. Greatsword just does too much damage right now, and it gives you so much, you know, safety nets, so many safety nets. So you have the blunderbuss, you have the, let's say you go net shot, you can actually slow the target when it gets hit by 40% for three seconds, just without any perks or anything like that. So crazy, crazy to take the blunderbuss. You get that kind of idea of being able to tag things from far away, not too far. It's a blunderbuss. It's more of a shotgun. So make sure you realize that, but it's going to be very, very good for tagging. And then also the great sword just going to have insane damage when it comes to PVE. And like I said, tons of safety nets with the relentless rush, the calamity counter. It's just all there to keep you alive. And that's exactly why people are running the great sword nonstop right now. And uh, those are probably the best three builds to run in Fresh Start. So if you guys have any questions, comments, let me know down in the comment section of today's video. I do want to say, guys, if you haven't already, there's going to be nonstop streams for me over on Twitch. So twitch.tv slash iGraphicGuy, make sure to follow me there. And then also like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on here on YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to go too quickly through that, but the last thing I'll say is light armor in light equip load is definitely going to help you the most. So you can see right now I'm going light and it's going to give me the dodge stamina cost a little higher at 50. However, you are going to roll much farther than you would if you're in medium. Most of you guys know this, so I didn't cover this early, but you can see the roll there. It's much, much farther than if you were in a medium setup. So if I throw on like a shield, we're now in medium. Look at this jump. Not much, right? You get three jumps. However, it's not near as far. And the one other tip I want to say before I call this one, and I know I've already said I was done, but is the stamina bar. You don't want to go to the exhaustive stage. So never bring that yellow stamina bar at the bottom to the gray bar. So here, I'll overdo it now. It'll go to gray. Look how slow I walk, right? So look how slow I am. When I get my stamina all the way back, now I start to pick up the pace again. I think it's about a 10% difference, but it's huge. Make sure to, if you're trying to, like I said, speed run through this, 1 to 60. These are just a few tips to know, a few things to know, and a few builds to know. So thank you guys again. I'll see you all in the next one.